I am Matthew Bishop. I'm a senior editor at the Economist Group, um, and I'm your master of ceremonies for the next day or so as we uh, explore this very important topic of how to encourage uh, foundations to play a bigger role and a more influential role in uh, driving uh, research and innovation uh, in Europe. Um, this is a topic of great personal interest. Uh, I wrote a book a few years ago called Philanthropy Capitalism, which talked about the potential that philanthropy has to, to be the sort of smart capital in society, that it, uh, at its best, philanthropy can uh, think outside the box, can back ideas that are unconventional, can take a much longer term uh, perspective than uh, maybe many other institutions in society which are uh, forced to concentrate more on the short term uh, and the, um, the needs of, of demonstrating quickly to people that their results make a difference, whereas so much that's in the field of research and innovation uh, really takes many years to deliver the kind of returns that society notices. Uh, and so there's a tendency, certainly increasingly in government, uh, to uh, wonder whether elected representatives get any upside from backing research, and so uh, therefore a huge need maybe for philanthropy to step in. But that raises, it seems to me, and we'll hear a lot about this over the next day or so, very significant challenges. Um, the, the foundation sector and individual philanthropists uh, rightly do not want to be seen just as a pot of money that can be dipped into uh, by governments to pursue government's own agenda. Uh, they want to be there as equal partners uh, who uh, bring more than money, also bring brains and ideas to the table. Um, there needs to be a new way of dealing with each other. We'll probably hear a, lo a lot about that. There needs to be a lot of thought given to the incentives uh, and structures by which uh, private money, whether it be foundation money or, or even corporate money, interact with government uh, to get the best uh, results uh, for society. Um, at a personal level, I've also seen how this new model can work. Uh, some of you will know that I'm a co-founder of something called the Social Progress Index, um, which is an attempt to measure how uh, a society performs uh, without using traditional financial metrics of success. So we've all heard how GDP is a very limited uh, indicator of how a, a society is doing. Um, I, I chaired for the World Economic Forum a group that really was looking at how, um, how social entrepreneurs and how social innovation could be more effective. And we felt that one of the things that was missing was a, a set of reliable measures on social performance of a, of a society. And so out of this, we felt there was a need for an index uh, that measured these things um, and that wasn't susceptible to sort of just economic, narrow economic analysis. Out of that committee, which was itself a committee of a, of a quasi, of a, well, a largely private entity, the World Economic Forum, we then went out and got a number of foundations. So Skoll Foundation, Avena Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, uh, some companies like Deloitte and Banco Compatamos out of Mexico. Um, and then also we brought together um, uh, some individuals, high net worth individuals. So Larry Page, the, one of the founders of Google, has also backed this initiative. And so we then hired uh, Michael Porter and a number of other academics uh, at Harvard and brought them in to provide economic rigor and first published the Social Progress Index for countries about three years ago. Um, it's had a lot of traction already, and what's been interesting is that we've seen it now be used to create social progress indexes at the level of, of, of cities. So we recently published our first Colombian social progress index, which compared the 10 biggest cities in Colombia that was all funded locally by a mixture of foundations and companies in Colombia. Um, we have now taken Bogota in Colombia and gone down to the regional level there. So each 19 electoral districts um, are compared on the same basis within the city uh, on outcomes for 
basic needs, foundations of well-being and opportunity and, and so forth. And we are now um, in a reversal of what was the model for the 20th century when GDP was developed around the world as the measure for a society's performance. Uh, we're now finding that finally the um, governmental institutions are wanting to work with us, and so we've, uh, we've been meeting with the UN Development Report people who produce the uh, Human Development Index uh, to work in collaboration with them. Uh, we've recently done some work for the European Commission, uh, which has produced a Social Progress Index for the European Union. And it's very interesting to me that maybe this is one example of really the sort of the conversation we're going to be having over the next day or so. How do we get um, a different approach to, to, to research and, and how, do we, how do we take this private sector initiative, private sector funding, and get that to lead to results that uh, benefit society as a whole? Interestingly, and this is a shameless plug, uh, we've had lots of support from foundations outside of Europe uh, for the Social Progress Index, but none from within Europe yet. So if anyone would like to come and talk to me afterwards about that, I'd be very happy to help. Um, very interesting piece of research before we go into the main agenda that the U4I, uh, EU4I study that's been produced uh, by the people who also brought us this conference, um, which reckons that about 5 billion euros a year are now coming from the foundation sector within the European Union uh, to support research and innovation. What I thought was also very interesting, though, was how skewed that is, that essentially only 1% of the foundations in Europe are responsible for, for that 5 billion. And I, I look at Britain, which is, seems to be the biggest, which I imagine is heavily skewed by the Wellcome Foundation. Um, you know, so when you take Wellcome Foundation out, it's probably a very different story. So there is a great challenge here to the foundation sector um, to up its game and play a much bigger role, I think, in, uh, in, in meeting this challenge. Um, at a time when, as uh, the, the conference program report makes, agenda makes clear, you know, Europe, uh, as is the rest of the world, is, is facing unprecedented challenges, um, both on the opportunity front, but also in dealing with new social pressures, the, 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 immigration, the, the, the refugee crisis being but the latest. Uh, where there's an urgent need for uh, compelling research that leads to new policies and new approaches to solving uh, the challenges that these developments are presenting to our societies. So um, I wanted to... That, those are my brief introductory remarks. We're going to go now to a series of keynote speakers. Um, the first couple we're not going to have Q&A after, but after that, the other speakers, we will throw it open after their comments to a bit more interaction. Um, we do hope that you will uh, tweet, um, and we have um, uh, a Wi-Fi address up there, uh, and an at Fizzy Conference, and a hashtag PHISI, um, uh, which will help people track down what we're talking about.